Welcome back to Switch to Linux. So we are going to tackle today a simple project. This one was requested earlier and I totally forgot to check uh, who requested it. I'll attempt to find you and let you know it's up. Uh, but we wanted to look at just a very simple project and we're going to look at iTunes artwork. So I was asked this question because um, iTunes itself um, does publish some standards as to what you want the uh, what you want your artwork for your podcast to look like. Now, in this particular video here, we're just going to do a very simple uh, a very simple mock-up. And the reason I want to do such a simple mock-up is is just to show you just some of the basics. This is an easy image. Of course, you could do something very complicated in uh, in this. Uh, mock-up but uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do something fairly simple so uh, from iTunes uh, this is iTunes partner dot Apple dot com um, so if you happen to go through the process and I have not done this yet I will I, it is on my target to do a podcast for another channel it's my Christian channel so it's actually going to be doing my mock-up for here today and I'm not sure if I'm gonna finally run with what I create but we're gonna throw some things up here um, so here you can uh, just get their basic FAQ here about what you do and down here you see do you need artwork and what file size do I need so this is what gives us our specifications so artwork for SoundCloud artwork for Facebook artwork for whatever you will typically be able to find some degree of specification so we want that information to know what you want to do and I'll tell you that this is for me as a web design designer web developer a little source of contention when someone's like here's some here's some images and they paste them all in a word document like oh god when you take an image and you drop it in a word document it automatically kills the resolution like it must cut it down to like 10 dpi or something because you cannot get an image off if you try and copy an image off it rarely ever copies off it's a pain to get images out of documents or you'll get somebody giving you this this beautiful portrait picture and they want this for the landscape of a website. No, we have to keep in mind the size dimensions we need. And so it may not make sense to you that why is it that this little image that I see requires such a big image dimensions? Because that's how their software works. There's reasons for it. Some apps will pull a bigger image. For example, if you have an iPad or a tablet or a phone or a device that has what it calls a retina screen, a retina screen means that the pixels are twice the pixel density as a typical screen. And so a 500 by 500 pixel will actually be showing as a 1000 by 1000 pixel. And so you have to take into account a variety of different apps, a variety of different things. And so you want to always hunt down the image specifications for all of your brand accounts, whatever those brand accounts happen to be. Otherwise, you're going to look very low quality and very low professional. Now, not that what I'm going to do today probably may or may not be a serious professional thing, but I'm just going to use it just to show you A, how to find the dimensions, B, how to find resources, and and see how to do some simple things in GIMP. I selected this project A because it was directly requested and B we can do it fairly simple although you can as long as you take these dimensions you can actually create much a much larger project. So what we need to know here is that our artwork must be saved as a JPEG or a ping file. Now what is it that you uh, why is it you would select a JPEG versus a ping? Well if you need any degree of transparency in your logo you want to use a ping file. If you only have a very very limited color palette. Now uh, disclaimer of this this of course needs an RGB color space which means technically there's not what you would call a palette um, as as an indexed image would have but if you have a lot fewer colors in your image like a lot of monotonous colors you might have a smaller file size with the ping versus the JPEG but if you're using a variety of colors or you're using real images like I'm gonna be doing in this this tutorial here today um, then you will probably want to stick with the JPEG. For most cases on this, we'd probably want to do the JPEG, but you might do the size on both of them and see. Now it wants uh, JPEG or PNG. Um, now when it says JPEG, JPEG, you can do JP, dot .jpeg or dot .jpg. Um, so there's a couple ways to do that. Um, I usually just do a dot .jpg. 
All right, so it needs to be the RGB color space, which means you're not uh, CMYK, you're not indexed, you're not monotone, you're not black and white, you are RGB color. If it's not RGB color, it will give you inconsistent results. You want a minimum of 14 by 14, and you want a maximum of 3,000 by 3,000. So what we're probably going to do, I think 2,500 by 2,500 would be good. It kind of splits the difference, gives you a little bit larger, which gives you a greater pixel density, which means even on the larger devices, you'll have a better image. Why not go the 3,000 by 3,000? Eh, you could. I am just never get that close to the upper boundary of things because eh, it can, inconsistent results can show up. We also need to take note, we are at 72 DPI, which is exactly what I would expect being a web-based application. And I'm not gonna click the link here because Apple has broken their site and this takes us to the main iTunes download store. So, whatever. All right. So with that, um, the next thing, while I have the web browser open and we're on the web browser screen, before we actually jump into GIMP, let's talk about some resources. Now, as I said, um, I'm going to be pulling resources in to do my, uh, my podcast for, my, for what will be on my Christian channel. You can check out my blog. is actually my longest running website that I have. It's rwalkinchrist.com. I've not written on it in a little over a year just because I've been doing a lot of switch to Linux stuff. Uh, but more work is coming over there if that type of thing tickles your fancy. Um, now, the thing is, is that I picked the, the images we're going to work with today is I have my logo in a PSD format that was on my other computer. Um, I have a bio picture of myself and I had downloaded a, an image of a cross. So the image of the cross is what we would say that I went out on the internet, I grabbed a picture from the internet to use. Now when you do that, it is extremely important you have to pay attention to this thing called copyright. Okay, There is such a thing as copyright in America and we cannot just go online to Google and do something particularly for this. Now, if you're doing something like fair use, you're writing a blog article about it, you give reference back, no problems. But if you are doing something for a brand or for a logo for this or a brand on a, on a social media site or whatever else you wanna do, you wanna make sure you are using images you have the legal rights and permissions to use. A lot of times, I just take photos myself. I, I take a lot of pictures, I go all over the place, so I have landscapes of woods and deserts and all this, sunsets, sunrises, so I have a whole lot of scenery images I can pull from from my own personal stock. Um, but there's, you know, a lot of images you want to look for. So you want to look for things and pay very close attention to what the copyrights are. So I just did free Christian images or free cross images, and I found this site here, uh, Pixabay, I guess is what this is and um, over here I can basically um, I can basically look through a series of images and I can see what the use is so this is free for commercial use no attribution required so I can use this image no matter whatever way I want to use this image for whatever purpose I want to use this image beautiful awesome that's the type of thing we want to be looking for so just double check, so you know, just click on any image here and see, it looks like this site here. So Pixabay apparently is a great place to go and find stuff. This one even has a picture in it. Let's see if that's public domain. Let's see if that's public domain. So that's the thing you wanna be looking for. You wanna be looking for things in the public domain if you are going to be borrowing images from the internet. Don't just go on and grab something because it looks cool. You are probably gonna be breaking copyright. If you break copyright, you are going to be upset when they come back to you and they're like, we would like 700 bajillion dollars for using our image. And, and you have no legal ground to stand on because you stole something from the internet. <laughs> all right. So with all of that said, what we are going to do now is we're going to go ahead and dive into GIMP. So I went ahead and adjusted my screen today. So when I actually look at GIMP, I'm looking at GIMP in the screen. Is that awesome? Yeah. <laughs> Move my picture to the side. This looks better this way. You can see here are the resources that I've used. I'm going to have my bio picture. I have my, um, my logo. Now this is still a PSD format. So I'm going to go ahead and just double click this. You see what we have here is just the, the basic uh, um, uh, image here. Let me, uh, I'm forgetting my hotkeys. I've been doing Photoshop this week <laughs> on the other computer. All right, so here we have some text here. We have the, the, 
the footprints here are a little beveled. Um, but anyway, that's okay. Then we have our uh, image here, and we have the biopic here. That's a much smaller biopic than I thought it was. I thought that was a high-res biopic. I might have to pause and go find me another one. It depends on what I want to do with this thing. Okay, and we're back. I just had to go grab the uh, higher-res biopic. Bio Even that one doesn't look as good as I, I thought it should, but uh, that's okay. We'll go ahead and run with it. Um, this probably will not be my file anyway. So the first thing we want to do is we want to come up to our file menu and we want to create a new document. Now at this point in time we want to just enter in our dimensions that we know. So we're going to do 2500 by 2500. Select your pixels and then I want to go and come down to your advanced options. This is going to double check our resolution. Remember most cases you want your X and your Y resolution to be the same. If you do not need those to be the same, you are a professional in the industry and you know why and how to change that. Um, so we are going to keep though 72 DPI. Now remember the color space we have to choose from RGB or grayscale. We could change this to an index color later. We do need to keep the RGB and then we want to decide what to fill it with. The background color, the foreground color, so this would be black, this would be white, this is another white. I generally am going to want to start with a transparency. It's usually a little bit easier to start with transparency and add a solid background if you need a solid background rather than to take it out if you don't need it. So we're just going to do that and then our comment is, is just fine. So go ahead and click on this and now this is our 2500 by 2500 pixel image. So with this, what I think I'm going to do is I want to start by dropping, and I don't know what I'm going to do. Like I said, this is, this is just a, a sample thing. We're just going to do a couple things. So I think what I'd like to first do is on my, on my book, if you look on the back of my, my Christian book, this is the same bio picture that I'm using. And I might update my bio picture as I update and, and publish new books. But for now, this one here happens to be the, the image I'm going with. Who knows? I might actually create a new one for when I want to do the podcast. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to start by opening as a layer. I'm going to drop my biopic directly on here. So you'll see that it's not quite the full size. And so now I can decide do I want to make this thing the full size or would I like to, uh, would I like to just kind of keep it the way it is. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, make this guy larger. So I'm going to come up into layer. And remember, if you go up into your layer, you can scale your layer size. Now you can adjust it, or in this case, I'm just going to type in what I want it to be 2500 by 2500, scale it. That'll be the same size. And it might not have filled in exactly where it was, but it, it looked like it did in this case. So I have the picture of me. So now maybe what I want to do is we'll go ahead and we'll take the logo and I'm going to go ahead and put the logo down near the bottom of the picture. So I'm going to go ahead and up, open this up. Now this one here is all a layered thing and so I have a lot of old layers on here. So what I want to do is I'm going to copy this group layer if I can copy the group layer. I might just be able to copy each individual part of it here. I'm going to do a quick test. Okay, so even this, uh, even this guy here is a little bit too small. So what I'm going to do is this one here. We're not going to adjust the layer. We're going to adjust the whole image. I'm going to scale the image. So yeah, even that's a little too small. Let's go ahead and adjust that to 2,500. And just double check, make sure it doesn't pixelate out. Sometimes if you do a, that much uh, adjustment, it might pixelate out. Okay, so here I have my footprints down here. I have my, uh, my text up here. I think what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to delete all of the layers uh, that are not important here. And let's see, what's what are these? Okay, let's delete that one. OK, 
Okay, so now I'm left with just the two layers I have, the text and the footprints. So I think what I wanna do here with the, with the text, now in this case here, uh, if you recall, what I kinda like to do is I like to bevel this out. So if you look at my Patreon account, you see that the R Walk in Christ, I didn't leave it as just basic white, uh, basic blue text like this. I actually wanted to adjust it. So we're gonna come up here into our filters and what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, do some effects. So adding bevel under decor will give us the ability to uh, to um, do some adjustments. Now we have a work on copy, which will create a copy of this and uh, keep a bump layer, which will give us another layer that we can, we can adjust or move around. I'm just gonna go ahead and pick my five, pick adjustment, and it's giving me an error there. Okay, so apparently it does not like group items. So let's go ahead and ungroup these. Just drag those out of the way. And let's see, this one here, oh, that's my footprints, this is my text. So let's go ahead and do that again. I had no idea you cannot add a filter to something that was in a group. That is uh, good to know. So I'm doing these tutorials. I, I'm an, I'm an expert professional in, in uh, Photoshop, but uh, I'm mostly doing these tutorials so I can learn how to use GIMP. Okay, so you can see we get a little bit of a bevel there. Not a whole lot, so I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. I'd like a little bit more bevel there. So that is a copy, so we're going to discard that. And then we're gonna go ahead and bevel that up a little bit more. Let's go up to 10 and see what 10 looks like. I don't want it to be super unprofessional looking. I want it to have just enough. So this was actually pretty nice here. This is, this is pretty nice. Now the next thing I wanna do is if you look at our main picture back here, it's kind of on a darker background. So we're gonna give this just a little bit of a shadow. So we're gonna come up into our filters, light and shadow, and I wanna give it a shadow. Now what you don't always think of is if on a darker background, give yourself a very subtle white drop shadow. I'm gonna up my opacity to, whoa, not to 75,000, 75% opacity there. Um, so there, and now we're going to go ahead and push okay on that. So now we have a light drop shadow on that. Okay, so remember that your drop shadow adds as a different layer. So I'm going to merge down to lock my drop shadow onto my beveled text. And then of course we are on a copy. So I'm going to, um, what I'm actually going to do is merge this layer down as well. So now this is one layer. And now we are going to uh, copy the layer. Just control C and then I'm gonna control V. Now what we need to do is we need to drop this where we wanna drop it. So I'll come down and just go ahead and drop where I want it which I'm gonna do this actually at the very bottom. Okay, so now remember that when you paste that in, it's up here as a floated selection, a pasted layer. You need to come up here, um, right click and push the to new layer and this is going to drop it uh, right on there. So now eh, this does not look quite like I would like it to do, but that's not too bad for what we're gonna do here today. So the next thing I might wanna do is I might want to fade this out, maybe just fade the bottom part of the image down to black. So what I'm gonna do for that is I'm going to come down here, I'm gonna drag from the ruler, I'm gonna come down just to the very top of this where I'd like this to start. It's just gonna give me a marker indicator. Just about where I want it to be. I'm gonna hide our new layer. I'm gonna go ahead and double click this over here. I'm gonna label this our walk in Christ, which is just the label. I'm gonna click off the eyeball over here in the corner, which is going to hide the layer. Now what we're gonna do is I'm going to apply a gradient. I'm going to apply a transparent to black gradient. And what I'm gonna do is just select the part I'd like the gradient to be. And then we're gonna select our gradient tool 
and then what we need to do is foreground to transparent. Now, I might uh, I might mess this up a couple times, so that's okay. We'll just do our, our undo. So I'm gonna holding my sh my control button will allow me to keep the gradient as a solid shift. Okay, so let's see. Of course, you do actually have to drop the gradient on the right layer, so make sure you select the layer you wanna do it on. Oh, those newbiness. All right, so that's kind of the opposite direction I wanted it to go, right? So we're gonna go ahead and start from the bottom and work up to the top. So that there is gonna subtly fade down into our uh, into our black, but it's it's a little bit a uh, little bit less than I would want. So I'm actually gonna shoot for just a little bit up here. So now you can see in our image that it just kind of subtly fades to a really dark gray. So now when we click on our logo, it does have a little bit better appearance to it there. And so there we have our, our uh, logo in the back. So now what I might wanna do is let's get rid of this background in the image because the background of the image is, is a little on the, you know, it just doesn't fit. So what we're gonna do here is um, one thing you can do just for extra measure if you're doing something is you could make a copy of the layer. Uh, we're not going to bother with that at this point in time. I do want to deselect. So Control, Shift, and A will deselect. And I do not need my uh, boundary down here anymore. So I'm just going to drag this back up to the ruler to get rid of it. All right, so now you can see... Um, Oh, I made a little mistake there. What I didn't do is I, uh, the gradient will only apply to what the selection was. Yeah, I'm occasionally a noob at this stuff. Take off the gradient. Uh, kick off the, uh, the selection there. And what I want to do is I want to do a reselection up to about here. Here. That seemed to work a little bit better for the gradient. Okay, there we are. I always forget about those little things like your selection. Now the reason we had to do the selection is we only wanted the gradient to apply to the part that we had selected, not to the whole thing. So that looks a little bit better. All right, so now we're gonna go back, re-highlight our bio picture, and then remember that we have the various tools that will allow us to select uh, regions of similar colors, fuzzy selections, lasso selections. We're gonna try the similar color selection and see if this will work. Um, apparently not with a threshold of 15. Okay, that's not gonna work. Okay, so most of our tools, it looks like, are not going to work all that uh, all that well for us there. Let's see. So I guess what we're going to actually do, I'm going to kind of do this one old school. I'm going to just kind of start with uh, start with just the erase tool. Now, when you're erasing tools around in order to have um, uh, in order to get a nice um, in order to get a nice, uh, like a, a nice um, uh, color fade, is you want to have a soft brush around the edge. That's going to allow you to get rid of things. Now, I can see right away here that I'm getting white in the back. So what causes the white in the back is that this layer apparently does not have an alpha channel. So I want to go ahead and add an alpha channel to that. So now I can erase this layer. So if you go to erase a layer and you're not getting uh, the background grid on it, Make sure you just right click that and add an alpha layer. So you can see we're just kind of going around here. And really, I, I don't even have to be super cautious here uh, because of the fadiness that we have um, of the brush. Even if you do leave a little bit more on, it's actually going to be almost impossible to tell. 
So you can, whoa, of course, if you give yourself a mohawk like that, you do have to undo something there. Every now and again, you want to run the brush over it, see what it is, and take your finger off. Because when you have to do that, uh, the undo there, then it's way better to do that undo. Um, it'll undo to the last place where you, uh, where you had deselected. So now I'm going to actually decrease the size of my brush quite a bit zoom in a little bit on the image and that this way I can get a little bit closer without uh, messing myself up too much. You can of course do fun things like shave off the alfalfa, take the zits off your face, whatever else you want to do while you're up here. You know, this is uh, this is some nice image manipulation. I know I'm, a, I'm, I'm not the most attractive guy in the world there, but sorry about that. But uh, nothing I can do about that. All right. And it took off a little too much of my shoulder there, so we're going to go ahead and do that. A lot of what I'm doing here, I'm not as concerned if I take off a little bit too much, but what you do want to do is just make sure you get any contrasty colors out. Okay, so that's actually pretty good. So now I'm just kind of down mostly to myself. It looks like right there, it almost looks like there's a little too much right there. Maybe a little too much right there. Basically, I want to give myself a little bit of a shave there. There you go. All right, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to take my Christianity image. I'm going to drop that in kind of behind me. All right, let's go ahead and turn this back on. Now, the next thing I might want to do here is I might actually want to re-add some black to that. I'm seeing that that's not looking quite as good. Let's go ahead and grab our, um, let's just do the paint tool and... Go to right there. There we go. So now we have the logo there without having any portion over there that's going to cut out. So it kind of gets into the black, but where the image is, it slowly fades into black. Where there's not part of the image, then it's it's pretty solid there. So now what we're going to do is, I'm just going to drag this guy on over. All right. So again, the size is not exactly where we want it. So let's just go ahead and go into the layer. And we're going to do a scale layer. And I'm just going to do the layer width to the size. It doesn't matter what the height is at this point in time. We're going to move this to where we would like it to be. Of course, I'm going to drop it down behind myself. I do not like the fact that the cross is that much on me. I don't definitely am. I'm not. I'm not the savior. That's for sure. <laughs> Ask anyone knows me that. <laughs> Just trying to see if I can get a nice image background where the cross is in there. I think what we might be able to do is let's go ahead into the layer and let's just go ahead and flip the layer. And let's go ahead and make the layer a little bit larger. Let's go ahead and scale it out. Let's scale it out to, let's do 3000. So I'm just trying to get it to the point to where I can just kind of do that and let's do something like that. All right, so there we are. So now we have our, our layer out there. Uh, we have a cross, we have nice clouds. I've cut myself out so it doesn't look too bad. We can clearly see what the title of the, 
of the thing is. We have the nice, uh, what would correspond to the logo down here. Now the next thing what we're going to do, and i got to remember how to do this one well. Um, uh, but what we want to do, and again, be very, very careful with things like lens flares. But we're going to go ahead and give one a try. Um, and uh, usually you usually you will not uh, uh, lens flares are not always the best things uh, that that there are um, but being a Christian thing I think a lens flare is probably gonna be a little bit more um, a little bit more uh, ac acceptable than most places let's go remember where lens flares are I don't use them enough I know they exist there we are. There's a lens flare. All right. So we can drag this around, and I want the lens flare right on the middle of the cross. And let's go ahead and push the OK. See what that looks like. So there we are. So we have added a lens flare. <laughs> but at least it's a Christian site, right? Um, all right. So now we have um, now we have what would be a decent podcast thing. You can tell who the who the artist is if you're looking by this. You have an idea. It's a Christian podcast because of of the lens flare on the cross, and then of course we have down here the title, which would correspond to the title on the website. I'm not sure. Like I said, I'm not sure this is going to be the final one that I would actually use, but anyway, it, it would uh, certainly pass the iTunes idea. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to file and I'm going to save as. And I'm going to say first I'm going to save a copy as the XCF file type because you always want to save a copy of your layered, highest quality, most professional thing. So I'm going to do our walk in Christ. And we're going to go ahead and save this. I'm actually going to save it to the desktop because I'm going to put it over onto my other computer. So I saved a copy of it on the desktop. And then now I'm going to export as. Um, and I'm going to, I'll go ahead and export as both a ping file and a JPEG. So first we're going to export as the ping file. Say yes on that. And then you do not actually have to grab the pull down menu to. Uh, to choose how you're going to change it as long as you know the file extension. This is taking a long time. This is telling me this thing's probably going to be very large. And so on a site like this, a JPEG is definitely more of what you might want to run with. So we're going to go ahead and do another export as. We're going to do this one as a JPEG. You'll see that it will give us different options menu based upon the types that we want. You'll see that that one actually popped out really fast. So here's our final file here. Um, and let's see if I can find the ping file. So here's the ping, PNG file. So this one here, the difference is this PNG file is 5.2 megabytes versus the JPEG file is 827 kilobytes. So the, J, the uh, PNG file is uh, 7 or ish times the size of the JPEG. This is why you usually would want to use the JPEG. Again, I'd want to shore this up a little bit better. I'd want to crop around the edges a little bit better. Um, maybe fix the lens flare to actually center it for all of you OCD folks out there. I don't want somebody to not listen to the thing because they have OCD and the lens flare is not perfectly centered on the cross. Um, but that gives you an idea. We've beveled texts. We've added some layers. We've grabbed some resources. Uh, we've done some basic things. So um, that is, in a nutshell, how you might use GIMP in order to uh, create an iTunes podcast uh, cover art. Oh, well, thanks for watching, folks. Again, uh, this is Tom at Switched to Linux. And if you do like what we do over here, you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. And you can also find Amazon links down below, and uh, that will also help support the channel. So thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.